Hello and welcome to Family Dynamics. It's Catherine. It's Liz. And Ed. And John. And we have with us two very special guests. Let's say hi to Mom. Hello. And Aunt Therese. Hi. Great there to be we go. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in studio, because we've actually done a podcast with both of you before, but it was back in spring. Mom, you were visiting Aunt Therese, and we did it via Zoom, so hilarity ensued. It was not perfect. I mean, it's a little difficult to do things over Zoom, but, you know. <laughs> it was I mean... your dinner time, or we were holding up your dinner time or something. <laughs> so it's very nice to have you in studio, Aunt Therese, and Thank see you. you. Yes. <laughs> so um, you're in town, because uh, by this time, it's no longer a surprise or breaking news. Your son, our cousin's getting married. That's right. Finally. Finally. Well, well you don't have to say that. I mean, just be like excited. He's getting married. Hooray. I'm very excited. Yeah. Yeah. To beautiful and wonderful Jenny. So we have another family member joining and we've actually uh, got to know her over a couple of family get togethers that yeah, various holidays she's come. I yep. like at least the last two, I want to say I Easter know. and Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Mom, you've been absent for both of those off traveling. <laughs> like, whoops. I know. I don't know how I managed that. <laughs> it's very strange. Thanksgiving, which I hosted, you were in Hawaii. And when I told people that, there was two reactions. One was like, good for her. Or the other one was like, what? <laughs> Your mother is abandoning you? <laughs> um, we, for the most part, I feel, we all fell in the good for mom to go away. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We did. We were like, I, well, first of all, some of us found out much later than others because there's a little bit of communication problems with this big of a family. Sometimes you think that you've told everybody and then like little pockets don't know about things. And so I feel like I heard about it maybe the week before I was like, <laughs> She's going where? What? She's. What? I don't. I didn't even know anything about this. And then they were like, "Yes, you did." I'm like, "Well, I mean, I have a notoriously bad memory, but I feel like I would have remembered that she was going to Hawaii for Thanksgiving." But okay. Anyway, yeah, it was a little bit surprising for me, but other people knew in advance. So. And you had a good time, Mom, right? Um, I came to the conclusion that I really missed my family. What? I really did. <laughs> That's thought, not what I thought. That really, I wished I was with you guys. Oh. And the other thing was, at my age, to travel just to be someplace is silly. Oh, interesting. It's too strenuous. Oh. <laughs> I mean, and you spend the first two or three days trying to recover from, you know, having gotten up at four in the morning and been on the plane for the whole day and all the rigmarole in the airport. And, oh, yeah. No, really. Okay. And I never was really, I traveled a lot, but I never thought of it as being something I wanted to do. Like, oh, I can't wait till I retire and I'm going to travel. No. Really? No wonder lust? No. Not or, you know, some people have like a bucket list of places they want to go. That's no, not really. I wanted okay. to climb Mount Everest, but that came off the list pretty <gasps> <laughs> Pretty long time ago, and um, I have never heard that before. I, yeah. That was one of my bucket lists early in life too. I did not know we shared that. Yes, I found out at base camp one, you have to acclimate for like a long period of time. And one of my friends visited base camp one. I don't know what that really meant, but got something involved with maggots, and that <laughs> whoa. I was like, forget that I had a heart condition when I was earlier. That's what made me go like. I can't do it. No, I maggots. can't do it. Did they eat them? I don't know if it was what level, but that just and I just had a friend's husband that did it, and he was there when they had the recent horrible avalanche, and for three days she didn't know if he was dead or alive. Oh. So that for sure, that um, uh, ship has sailed. So at an early age, it probably sailed for you too, mom, with eight kids. Uh, yeah. You well, did clown him out Everest. It was eight children. <laughs> yeah, that's its own Everest. Well, I'll tell you something. I skied uh, when I was first married still. I loved it. It was so much fun. Your dad thought it was you go and you get cold and wet and tired and sore for what? <laughs> you know? mm. And I said, well, that's not how I look at it. And so I skied the last time. I didn't know it yet, but I was pregnant with William. Oh. And that? <laughs> that was 50 some years ago. <laughs> oh, wow. it's kind of a bummer because a lot of us in the family have skied. And if we had known that was one of your, I guess, hobbies or things you enjoyed doing, we could have brought that back around later in life so, for you. Just to 
clarify your dreams are to ski mount everest got it <laughs> oh jeez, <laughs> wrong <laughs> do you learn anything new to aunt therese mount everest and skiing we were actually uh, talking about this afternoon when we were walking it came up sort of like she said something about her bucket list has changed and i said yeah we at our age we no longer want to climb mount everest yeah wow. <laughs> can you believe that yeah. that's she fine the same thought so yeah. that is interesting you kind of evolve and change your goals based on where you're at and so for you to go to hawaii made you reevaluate how you'd want to travel now or if you'd want to travel yeah definitely i would come back to visit trays you know a family makes Mm. a good reason for travel but to travel yeah the destination is not Not that important yeah Mm. no and besides which at this point you get to a place where you're not really in charge of what's going to happen no. Oh, you're so good yeah. about that. Yeah, mm, and no, I'm very exactly. adaptable, but and oh. I, I did. Ver- <laughs> Sorry, Liz is being completely sarcastic. That's and you, true. You, you, okay. When I went to the Czech Republic, two of the people said, "You sure adjusted well." And I thought, "Well, you know, what are you talking about? It's fine." You know, I think they didn't have the feeling that I would. But is this when you lost your luggage? Oh, that was another for three trip. or four days. Oh, yes. yes, and somebody had to give me two T-shirts. Somebody else had to give me some underwear. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, it was bad. <laughs> and I, had, well, that's too long. A when story. was this trip? I don't even remember this. When did you go to the Czech I was Republic? At Albany. Yeah, mom has traveled a lot, but more recently it's been to see you and Therese, yes, or yeah. vice versa, which we've been yeah. so lucky you've come and visited yeah. quite often, yeah. because the, your son, who we mentioned, is getting married. He lives local-ish, which is nice, because all of our other cousins, your children, are back east, near you. Right. Which, you know, um, I have realized, uh, recently I said to my son, uh, oh, we need, need to do a Boston trip. Because that's the city you're closest to. I said, great American history, too. Right. right. So it'll be a good trip. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Even like Gloucester is gorgeous and oh. Cape Ann, Cape Cod. and I was trying to tell Cape Cod where uh, <laughs> I used to have a T-shirt that I bought because the eighth grade trip. Um, and we're talking always about travel, but this goes back into our family history, too. Uh, when we graduated from eighth grade. The one, older of the kids. Yeah. Oh. I think did you two younger boys get a trip back east yeah eventually it wasn't quite like an eighth grade by myself trip i think john and i both went like on an east coast tour yep okay well the older four traditionally maybe for rosemary, maybe rosemary. Or squeaked over the finish line but virginia probably arranged something else for herself she did of shock oh my gosh of course uh, so eighth grade year you got a trip back east to visit the relatives so that included you, your family and you aunt therese and then our aunt judy and joe and there might be your grandparents were back grandparents there of course so, well that's where my where i was going with cape cod so um i mean there was notorious stories when i stayed with you because it was during the summer Olympics and your kids were quite the hustlers with the McDonald's coupons that were related to <laughs> the Olympics. So it was like multiple meals a day. We were down there. I mean, I, the, the McDonald's clerks must have been so over our asses. We're like, um, and have the free Coke, please, and fries. And they're like, get out. I mean, like, it was insane. They were working it. Good for them. And we stood outside the McDonald's and asked, like, as they watched, are you going to use your coupon? If you take that coupon off your oh cup Oh my yet? gosh, I genius. Mean, we have nothing else to do. And of course, most of them were like, I don't want this piece of crap here. Sure, like, take my sure. little ticket. Like, Whatever. Now we've got this plus this plus this. We can go back and get a soft serve. They're like, get out. So <laughs> that was the big bulk of my daily trip. Listen, the girls are still couponing and uh, uh, well, trying to finagle a wiggle. They were yeah. geniuses Smart. at it back then, for sure. Yeah. And uh, then it was a famous hiking trip with actually Christian. Yes. What mountain was that? Do you remember? Blue Hill. Blue Hill. This is, uh, you know, my cousin, our cousin Michelle is kind of competitive and just likes to, I don't, I don't know, there's something about her that just, you know, she says, um, we get to the top of the mountain, we all go up together, and there's trail markers the whole way. She says, well, why don't we see if we can get down the mountain first? I am from Southern California. It's not like I know this mountain. <laughs> you and Christian go together, and the rest of us will go this way. We'll see who gets to the bottom first. Uh, well, that seems typically, suspicious. You know, really in life, in logic, if you go up one way of the mountain, you should really come back down the same way <laughs> to get to your destination. <laughs> the car. Parking, <laughs> to the car. Parking lot. So Michelle goes down the way we came up, and then Christian, who's kind of a little Dickens, maybe like eight or nine years old, young, yeah. 
he basically says, oh, okay, I know the way down. Oh. <laughs> We were lost for hours, oh, yes. hours, no. and then I got freaked out because from the distance I saw sort of like a farmhouse or a house, and I thought, and Christian sort of losing it because he's young, he's yeah. kind of crying, we're thirsty, and Wait, I. So it's just the two of you, you and Christian, yes, and I am insane. only thirteen. And what? We're yelling. There's no trail markers. There's nothing. Twice I was like, I realized we went around in circles. I'm like, oh, oh my God. God. I'm like, are there bears or coyotes here? Now, I'm like, and you, and you weren't on a soccer team, so this isn't Yellow Jackets. No, there has been a plane crash as well, Eddie. So. <laughs> Wait, were you in a cave? Did, was it raining? <laughs> we might have needed to get into a cave. We were trying to find one, John, and pick berries. So we were plotting all this. So I see a farmhouse in the distance, and I got too freaked out that Christian was really cute. We're going to get there, and they're going to kidnap him. We're never going to get out of this house. So I'm like, what? we can't go to the house. That's, That's where you went i thought it was gonna be like let's go there and use no. their phone no. now okay the farmhouse was probably in milton oh how far off were we jeez uh, and then i said i've got an idea i said i think i hear cars or a road let's just get down onto the road because trying to get off this mountain, I, I really had lost all sense of direction. Even though Michelle's Mom, in I, so much trouble for this. I have been already. a bluebird. Yeah. I was never a Girl Scout. That was the real problem. I was just a bluebird. You didn't have the skills. No sense of direction. Could not figure out where the sun was <laughs> heading in what direction. <laughs> Which does side the, of the tree does, does yeah. the moss grow on? No, like, no that was that. Okay. Nope. So poor Aunt Therese, I'm thinking. Um, and also, you know, this is no cell phones or pagers or anything. Oh, nothing. So, yeah. Yeah, we actually sent out the mounted police i know yeah that, what that uh part of the park had policemen on horses in that area looking for them yeah oh my it had gosh been hours and hours oh, no. so i get on the road with christian and i'm like let's just head in that direction and i'm like i think this is the entrance to the park so we walk in we're walking along the trail and it's already starting to get dark i mean it's like you know i would be freaked out if it was my kids so then we walk into the parking lot it's still dusk and there are horses, uh, yep. mounties on horses to race, <laughs> like sheriff cars. And this is, I am surprised you didn't get a big bill because nowadays you get a big bill for all this. But we walk on like, and at this point, like, it should be like, should I should have fallen on the ground dramatically relieved that I've saved Christian and <laughs> solved all this. But the sense of shame and embarrassment was so overwhelming, like. Oh, a really big deal's been made out of this. And we're just meandering up like, oh, hi, hey. Like We kind of got off course. I think Christian did semi-faint. He was like, oh. <laughs> because we've been gone so long. I mean, Teresa's been so really like, how do you call your sister? I, yeah, and, I've lost your child. Well, the best is, <laughs> and I thought like, you know, as sisters, we talk all the time. No one knew this story until I got back home and like a couple days later, like, well, how was it? What happened? I started to tell it. And mom was like not alarmed typically as a typical mom. Dad's like, wait, what? They were on horses? They were like, they were looking for you? <laughs> looking for you everywhere. And I'm like, it was almost dark? Yes. Yes. It was yeah. actually like the local news was there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That would have been amazing. Two children walked up, yep. lost in the woods, finally yep. emerged. Right, but I do need to remind you that this was called Blue Hill. Yes. Not a mountain. <laughs> oh, my God. Blue what is that? Hill. What is that implying? That it wasn't even that big of a situation? <laughs> well, you know, it was rustic, so yeah, regardless of no, how it, high it was. It was scary, yeah, because where were you? You know? Like, I felt like it was very Blair Witch Project area. <laughs> now, just to been. be controversial, oh yeah, can we circle back to, was there any fallout for Michelle over sending you off in this oh, of random not. direction? No. Okay, no. just checking. No. Just wanted to see. No, because it really was our fall. I mean, uh. and also because Christian really, he had a lot of confidence too. He th really uh. thought he could figure this out. So I was like, alright. <laughs> and Christian is so much fun. That's who I wanted to be with. The girls are being like annoying and Mock is always so crazy. So I was like, yeah, Christian and I, like the little kid, we'll we're going to go away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just, what's weird is when you think about the numbers, it's not like we divided evenly. It was like, you know, six over here and the two of us went, went this way. It makes no sense. I mean, that was full sabotage in some ways. Yes, exactly. So the yeah. stranger from LA. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. No water, no rations, nothing. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. But you know, that was part of the eighth grade trip that we all got to go on. And and then I left your house and then went to Nana and Grandpa's house and we did a little day trip to Cape Cod. So they were not in Cape Cod. What where did they Actually, live when they yeah, were back they were there? Living were there? They? Yeah, they were. They had several 
residences. Around that area? Yeah. And the first one was a really wonderful house that was sort of as you head toward Cape Cod and get on that road. Oh, okay. It was, what was that one? Marshfield. Marshfield. I oh, love that yeah. house. And mm-hmm. I went back there, and our brother Joseph was there living with them at the time. And so he and I were talking. When was this? I went back one time and when they were living there. But 80s, mid-80s? I, I would say early 80s. Early. Okay, like, okay. And so I, I said to him, well, I'm so glad to see a pl- where they are. You know, I, I have a, I like to have a picture in my head. And he said, well, for now. Yeah. Oh, my he dad, knew that they were already going to move? My dad yeah. just never stayed put. No, he didn't. Yeah, it seemed like we moved every two years. About. Yeah. Gosh, even later in life they did that. So then actually, if it was early 80s, I probably visited the Marshville house and we went into Cape Cod for a day trip, you know, in in sort of the fun central town of Cape Cod. Right, right. So you brought up your brother Joseph. I don't think I ever knew that he lived with your parents. Yeah, I thought he lived out here somewhere. What was his sort of life trajectory? I don't really know. He lived out here. Mm -hmm. And then he, I think he moved from here to Oregon. He went in the monastery. Oh, that's right. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, let's, you know, this is actually, I think, something that we'd all be very intrigued. Maybe that's not the right word, but it it needs to be informative to us because I think there's a lot about Mm -hmm. our Uncle Joseph, your brother, that we don't know about. And I have flash memories of him as a kid and even some as a young adult coming to visit us. But I don't really have a clear idea of where he lived or what he was. even. I don't even know what his job was. So after high school, did he go to college? Went to Loyola. Loyola. Oh, Loyola. Before it was Loyola Marymount. It was just Loyola. Oh, all boys. I remember hearing that history. On scholarship. He'd been on scholarship since eighth grade. He was so on scholarship for what? Super smart. Yeah. He went to Loyola High School as well. Oh, in which Los still Angeles. exists. Yeah. Which is still all boys as well. And very competitive. And mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. What was his scholarship for? Grades. Just did oh, very academic. well academically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he sang as well, correct? He ended up singing in the Seattle men's chorus. Gay men's chorus. Yes, I think so. So... He went to Loyola, which was also here in Los Angeles. For college. Did he live at home then? I think he must have. Yes. Yes. Well, based on telling of your history, yeah. I mean, I cannot imagine Grandpa being... <laughs> yeah. And he worked at the cafeteria, too. Oh, wow. Okay. And then after college graduation... I don't know what he did at he, first. He eventually lived in an apartment in, I think, Beverly Hills area, and mm-hmm. he worked in restaurants. Right. And then, Like waiter or s- a waiter. server? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, in very high end restaurants. Yeah. Oh, like I kind of remember that because he didn't, had three yeah. cars. Oh, okay. And lived in a really nice area. But before that, he had been a liaison officer with the Crippled Children's oh, right. Foundation. Easter, the Easter uh, Easter Seals. Easter Seals. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Oh. I mean, it was yeah. completely a surprise to me because I was in social work or sociology major, and he'd never seemed interested. And here he was being the the go-between between the organization and the yeah. parents' groups. He was very mm. quiet. Yeah. You know. Well, do you think some of that was because back in that era, I mean, most men, if they were gay, were closeted? Oh, Lord, it was a big deal. Yeah. I mean, he probably did not, with your parents in particular, probably feel like he could and live... I, I think he still dated females, so I'm not quite oh. sure he was... All, you know, committed to that lifestyle. Well, back then it would have been yeah. easier not to be because of the expectations of right. both his family and society. Right. But I think he was still questioning. Oh, uh, well, because yeah, what would have his exposure been as well until he probably as an adult living in Los Angeles? Right. A more independent life. I remember he yeah. would come to visit occasionally. and It felt like he lived far away because we didn't see him all that often as an uncle. And when he would come, they, the gifts were wrapped really beautifully. Always, and I, I remember even being like six, maybe six or seven years old and having just a little awareness what homosexual was or gay. I remember kind of going like, hmm. He's a bit, not well, fabulous, but like fancy or, you know. So, yeah, even in that little bit of our brain that was not, because I feel like just in our family, I was not super aware of what a homosexual was until much later. Like right. maybe even high school or later grade school. So it would not have even occurred to me 
that well, that's what was I had happening. A, one of my good grade school friends, best friends, was Heather McDonald, and that chick, man, she had older she siblings. Knew stuff. She knew stuff. So I was definitely like, hmm, I think my uncle might be what my friend Heather told me about. But, you know, we'd see him occasionally, and I remember him, he, I might have confused. I thought he was a sommelier, like wine. No, that was Richard. What? Really? Oh, wow. Okay, so he that's your also, other brother. He mm-hmm. was also Joseph. But he might have just been what Trace is talking about, which is more like a high end maitre d. Right. Or, or a high end server knows a lot. A sommelier yeah. now, right. as I later in life, because we've talked, John and I have talked about the um, documentary Psalm, which tells you what it takes to become a sommelier. To officially be that is insane right. so I, he might have just been an expert you know an unofficial or very yeah. well knowledge maitre d because to actually be a sommelier is like right. crazy or very impressive and uh, he did i knew work at some restaurants and yes. that's what you just talked about right. so easter seals and then he also worked i believe it was for the royal caribbean and wrote yes. the blurbs for their travel documents or oh, wow magazines or whatever he was a talented writer yeah he really was. And I remember thinking, oh, this doesn't sound like it asks for very much originality, you know. Mm. But it might have been a good And one of the other things I remember gig. about him earlier, when we were, hmm, he was probably 12, and I was about 10 or 11, he played the piano beautifully. Mm. And, it, and he wasn't, he didn't like to perform. It wasn't for performance that he did it, although Dad always insisted that he perform when people came over mm. but i used to sneak in the room and lean up against the piano because i could hear it vibrating while he mm. was playing it was just wonderful <laughs> it was just wonderful did he take lessons then oh, oh yeah okay oh, yeah. and he was very good about practicing i took lessons piano and clarinet there's no evidence of that today. <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, because this is your, we, I don't know if we qualify this for you listeners. Uncle Joseph is the oldest sibling of the family, the firstborn. Yeah. You were the next, you know, child born. So your age difference was about two years. Not Close. Even. Okay. And then there is Peter M. next, your next brother. Mm-hmm. And then the twins. Yeah. Which is Trey's you and your brother Richard. After right. what, uh, the five, five kids. years? Four years. Four, Four and a half. Yeah. Four and a half years. Yeah. You're, you're, Seemed you're, like ages. You know, I was in school when they, mom was having the twins on. They called us to the principal's office to tell us when they arrived. Wow. Mm. And they hadn't told us it was going to be twins. You oh, can't really? Even imagine how surprised we were. Uh, uh, <laughs> what? That is actually crazy, but for the time, would they have just known for maybe two heart hearing two heartbeats, or would would there be any way to know? Oh yeah, they knew, but very close to the time they were due. Oh okay. As it turned out, and they really didn't tell many people. I don't think they told anybody. Now going back to so your brother was basically writing the blurbs for the cruise line. Yeah. Then I know he moved out of state. He went into a brotherhood, must- some order in Canada. Yeah. Oh, wow. really? Christian brothers or something like that. They were that. quite conservative. Yes. And Vatican II hadn't quite hit them yet. Right. And um, for reasons I don't know, Joseph was not happy. Well, mm-hmm. because he wanted to go into a conservative order, and then they got the Vatican II fever and went crazy. A lot of places had a very hard time figuring out how that was going to affect them. How to adjust. And he, he got caught in the... The mayhem of you know reform yeah it just it just was he was very unhappy i think he was only there about two years yeah uh the other impression that he gave me was that uh he went in so he was older a little mm-hmm. bit older and there were a lot of young men and so i sort of got the impression there was some abuse going on oh. whether it was just corporal being too strict on these young boys and he was more mature Mm-hmm. Um, but that was a conversation I didn't get to have with him. Uh, well, I'm sure there was a lot you didn't get yeah, to have with him. True, true. Yeah. He came home, and I don't know how long it was before he went into the Trappist right, monastery for about six years. Yeah. It, do we have the order right? This is after he wrote for the cruise line? Yeah. or this Really? So how old was he? In his 40s? Um, Might have been. Mm, no. No. Maybe. Maybe. Really? Yeah. 
mom, you are so bad at getting out communication in this family. I mean, because we would, I would have been old enough at this point to be like, what? Our uncle's going to try to become a monk, a Trappist yeah. monk? Yeah. So where, where are the Trappist monks based? Like, what is that? In Oregon. Yeah, he was up in Oregon. They have a place like in Kentucky or something like that, but he... He was in the um, Our Lady of Guadalupe in Oregon. Yeah. Now, before basically taking this direction in his life, had you ever met or had he come out to the two of you or no? So not to your parents, not to you. No, he came home from the Trappist and he was home for quite a while. And I got into graduate school, which would have been after John was born. And I got into a class about pastoral counseling. And if you're dealing with people who are addicted or are the children of an alcoholic or if they're the children of a military family or, you know, all these different kinds of situations, then you have other things to be concerned about if you're going to be dealing with them pastorally speaking, you know, if you're going to be helpful to them and they're alcoholics, really, that's going to work because Mm -hmm. you're really dealing with the alcohol to start with and if the person is kinds of um questions was you know or concerns was if they're a a homosexual Mm. how would that affect you know the counseling and by that time joseph and i had still never talked about it did you know though or did you think or i was i was pretty sure by that time but never spoken to either one of you I had no clue about homosexuality. So then, therefore, like, how would you start a conversation if you don't even anticipate? It wouldn't even occur to you. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember when Joseph, I mean, when Peter, wait a minute, let's try my kids. (laughs) James and William were little kids. And he invited mom and dad and me and the priest that married us over for dinner. And he was showing off his apartment, which was lovely. Who, Joseph? Yeah. This is? Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, you'd want to live there. Mm -hmm. And he had this friend, and they only had one bedroom. Oh. And they had, you know, like a king-sized bed. And I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew at that point, but it wasn't talked about. So back to when I was in graduate school, when John was little, and I came up with this class, and... I had to write a paper that was, how would I counsel somebody who was dealing with a difficult situation? So what I did was, I said, what if I was dealing with a woman who was concerned that her brother, who was homosexual, had never really talked to her father, Mm. and to let him know before the father died that he was loved and accepted? So I went about it by doing lots of research on homosexuality. So I wrote the paper. And I wanted to show it to Joseph to Mm. open the conversation. And we got together for dinner. And so I gave him the paper. And he said, yeah, mm -hmm, this is, he said, I'll I'll read this. And he put it aside. He said, what I really want to talk to you about is that I'm going to move to Oregon. (laughs) I was like, what? I was just like, you could have knocked me over with a feather. And later, then he, he got a hold of me and he said, can I make copies of this to give to friends? Oh, wow. He thought it was it was really well done. So I was very pleased about that. But he didn't take that opportunity to he did. talk. Oh, he, he did. did. And he talked to dad oh. openly. Dad, Our dad or he, his, his father? Your father. Your, your grandfather. Mm-hmm. And if you remember your grandfather, <laughs> he was... A, he was a uh, I don't know, a force of nature, I guess you could say. Sure. And evidently dad had known and mm. hadn't really had a conversation with him, but he had he had really accepted him, having known that for some time. And so when he died, which was not too long thereafter, because I know he was already sick when, when that thought came up to me about, like, I really care about this. I want them to, to know and be reconciled, and I think they can be. Mm-hmm. And they were before he died so it was it was really i don't know do you think mother was oh no i don't think mother was no Mm-mm. no well i mean mm. when i get it this is a complete aside but when i get into the charismatic renewal which was legitimately in the church really a different way of prayer and a different way of relating to the community of the church she started praying for me to come back to 
you know, to the Catholic Church because she was pretty <laughs> sure this was so far off the mark. That it was. <laughs> you were such a rebel. Yeah. So I knew. I mean, and she she always had this attitude about, you know, how disturbed she was about the boys. About mm. the boys. Yeah. All of her boys were just a real challenge. <laughs> So your paper basically opened the door for Joseph to feel strong enough to talk to your dad. And that's pretty amazing because, yeah. I mean, if he died soon thereafter. And was he living in Oregon at the time that your father passed away? Had he already left to go? At the, you're talking about he. this is when he went to Oregon to join the order or the monastery that he was part no, of? No, no. When he went to Oregon at that point, it was to join the homosexual community. I mean, oh, he started singing with the gay men's chorus. She started doing all these things. And he had a partner, David, up until the time he died. Yes. Was he from Oregon? Was that part of the catalyst to move there? Because they moved and lived there together, didn't they? Yep. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where he met David. Okay. But that's who we, they were both together until both of them separately but passed away. Yeah. And yeah. your brother died relatively young, right? I mean, what, how old? He was 60. That is was he mom? That I mean, is first young. of all, that sounds old, but it is quite young. Yeah. That is young. Yeah, yeah. Well, I go by the standard of William. You know, oh, well, yeah, that's our true. brother. But yeah, that's now in today's times. I mean, that's yeah, sixty is young. Yeah, sixty is too young. Well, that's wonderful that they had that opportunity to talk. But you know, and then you reference that Nana did not come to that place, yeah. which is very typical for they never talked about it with me. Never. never. Oh wow. Never. So you never lived near Joseph because he didn't ever live back east except for that time. Right. Maybe you lived with your parents in Cape Cod. Right. right. And we would communicate by letters. Letters? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was, I really felt like um, very open with me in the sense of, uh, you know, sharing his, let's say, unhappiness in the Trappists and how hard it was. And he was very uh, supportive uh, to me and... Um, I felt like we had a great relationship. That's yeah. so nice. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Because, yeah. you know, age gap was what with the two of you? Yeah. I can remember when, when Nine he years. died, he uh. was in the hospital. He was going to go to hospice. Mm -hmm. And in hospice, he didn't last 24 hours. Oh, gosh. And uh, so he's in the hospital. And I, I went to go see him. And I said, Joseph, I said, I just really want you to know you've been the greatest brother. Aww. Yeah. And he, he you know, it touched him. Oh, that's so nice you're able to say that to yeah. him. Yeah, he he was a very sweet brother to me. He did have a very sweet and kind nature yeah. to him. Yeah. And I remember that as a kid. Yeah. And um, later in life, him and I sort of reconnected through you. I think there was a visit with David. Yeah. They came, came to the stayed. house. Yeah. They came mm -hmm. and stayed with us. And I think... Um, Twice, I think. At the time, I think I might have... What year did he die? Do you know the year? It was... I believe 2006 or so. Yeah, so I think previously I'd even worked at an AIDS hospice mm -hmm. and, you know, done AIDS walks and all things like that and been very active sort of in the LGBTQ plus community. So I think he felt safe with me. Mm -hmm. And so we would communicate and occasionally talk on the phone. And I remember when you told me that, because he got sick before David, I sent him, uh, there was these robes called Barefoot Dream Robes, and I sent him and David both robes, and he called me and said, oh, these are fabulous. Like, <laughs> And he sent me, I still have kept them. They didn't ever go with anything in my house, but he sent me these beautiful blue glass goblets for a wedding gift, because he couldn't come to my wedding. Aww. And, um, uh, because I invited him, and, you know, oh, I just, I cannot make it, and, you know, it's, but he sent me, they were, and they were beautifully wrapped. I, I don't know. I don't think he wrapped them and sent them to like, but they got to me and they were so beautiful. And occasionally my husband would be like, why do we keep these? We never use them. And I'm like, no, you we gotta can't keep get them. rid of yeah. them. We can't get rid of them. I go, I will find a use for them somehow, some yeah. day. And if not, it's the, one of the only gifts I've ever, well, the only gift I ever got from my uncle. So I'm like, I can't give it away. Yeah. So I think that the next generation even although we were not around him a lot, I feel like we did embrace him. And he felt, I think, by some of us that he had relations with welcome by. But I think just... I he, hope so. But you, know, you yeah. talk about generational. It's like the time that he, it was not spoken about. It was closeted. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, how hard for him to live in that time period compared to now where... I mean, also because he was 
basically born and raised in L.A. Of all the cities, if you are a gay man, you have a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're in a community. You're not in the middle of America where maybe prejudice on a daily basis was surrounding you. But what you don't understand is how Catholic our parents were. And he was. And he was, obviously, pursuing that later in life. I don't think he was Catholic in the same sense as our parents Oh, no. Well, yeah. Well, the messaging is that it's a sin. And if that is put into your brain from birth, basically. And he became very angry with the church about that. Yeah. Because if you're, you know, I, most people, whether you agree or not disagree, I absolutely believe you were born that way. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you know, does the old thing, God make mistakes? No. Yeah, no. So mm-hmm. if God created me, how am I a sin? How am I a mistake? Right. So then, of course, you're going to come into conflict with your church, mm-hmm. who's constantly day in and day out preaching that to you. And there can be elements of it that you love, but then there's this overriding thing that, why am I bad right. for being born? And that's the oldest son, he, too, he, and the expectations probably me, were big. He told me that he knew when he was four. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. That mm-hmm. he was running down the road, and he just stopped in the middle of it, and he said, I know I'm different, completely different. He didn't know what it meant, but he had that awareness from the time he was four. Wow. I can't even imagine. No, and then feeling like it's not okay or not accepted. And you are, you know, knowing our grandfather being the oldest male of the family, the expectations, I mean, you talk about performing and piano and perfect grades and all those things. I mean, that carries a burden with it to live up to an expectation that obviously he was not going to be able to meet. I'm but. laughing because I was such a dickens of a little kid that there were no expectations. Can uh. we just get her up to be about 21 and get her launched and then we can give up? <laughs> get her out of the house? It was, it, you know, they had their issues with me. <laughs> That's surprising for uh, how little of a nice reception it sounds like. It sounds like Dad usually got. It's like, no, he's going to take all that off your hands. <laughs> he's the winner. <laughs> yeah, by that well, point, no, well, actually, yeah, we love him. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been. He took Mary. Hooray! One of the one of the things that happened, and I know we discussed this before, that Dad was kind of, you know, anti and difficult to deal with about it and so forth. Remember that I said that you know. We kind of... Oh, your dad about you two getting married. Yes. And so Mm -hmm. when he finally sat down with us, he says, so you really want to marry her? Right. I tell you, she's really difficult. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) history repeats itself because Michelle, our sister-in-law, still talks about a dinner that us sisters took her to and said, you really want to marry him? Are you sure? About James. Like, you seem like a doll. What are you getting into? So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, Mom. Yeah, I guess. Now, when Joseph moved to Portland, you said he sort of joined the gay men's chorus and he was living much more of an open life with David and living with him. Didn't they work for the post office? Joseph Horribly, did. he yeah. did. Yeah. He was working in the central yeah. location, sorting oh. mail, I yeah. think. Yeah. And what? Sort of, you have was, to start at the bottom. <laughs> You know? Yes, and and it was unheated, and he got chill lanes from oh, it. No. I mean, it was awful. And I thought, here's this talented, brilliant young man, right, right. not young man anymore. He was probably in his forties, forty, yeah, maybe, yeah, late forties yeah. by that time. And it, you know, it was like his life had just gone downhill. But you know, it's interesting about that. You can think about all the years that maybe outward appearances, you know, career wise or job wise, had it all together. But now he's in Portland, you know, living with his partner, being part of this group and community. And maybe the job was crap, but he might have been at the most peace personally ever in his life. Right. Do you feel yeah, that to was be true out or and accepted by people? Yeah, I in the think family. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He seemed happy. Um, you know, we'd have discussions and chair music and stuff. He loved Bette Midler and <sighs> Barbara Streisand and <laughs> yeah, movies. And he loved Broadway and so I, I th- think that was a happy time for him. Oh, good. Yeah. So maybe career-wise wasn't aligned, but for the first time in his life, maybe his right. personal life was. Yeah. And Career really, as you get older, that. that is what matters most. Right. Yeah. It's interesting he had to move so far away to kind of have that. Yeah. Because he needed to break away from everything that was here. Yeah. So when your mother died, did, did he pass away before your mother then, right? No. No, mom died in 2000, and he oh. died in, like, I think 2007, I think it was. Okay, mm. okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember the order, but, so then they had not come to any type of peace. Or acceptance. Not really. And he did so. not come to the funeral. Mom's funeral? Yes, uh, he did. 
then you know what? I had some of the worst case of jet lag or <laughs> uh, remember that? I came from work and had to come on a flight by myself. Yes, so you guys have all there being been there. All some confusion. So about I that. rolled into the wake, which I don't know. Southern California, and you know, you maybe you haven't been to that many funerals in your life. I'd never been to a true traditional wake where it's just like, oh, the casket is open and we're just all sort of meandering around and talking and kvetching. It's like, what the hell is happening? So I was on like a red eye. I came in hot. I was like, what's happening here? And of course, the cousins are all over me. And I, by, I don't know, by the time we were leaving somewhere, the four of us, and Catherine was always, if we rented a car, Catherine, I think, was the right age, 25 years or older, right. mm -hmm. would get the car in her name and be very you know, disciplined driving. And I was so out of my gore at this point. We stopped at a CVS, just the four of us girls Oh, my in the God, car. I remember this, yeah. And they said, Liz, you're not even allowed out of the car. You're I, she had your... lost her mind. She was being like a crazy person. Go, she was just... just like, if there was anything to get us riled up, she was like, come on. <laughs> you're like, oh, my God, calm be, hey, down. I rolled in hot, ready to go, have a reunion. And I rolled in this wake. And there's like Nana. So I'm like, oh, my God. So I forgive me. I did not remember Uncle Joseph being there. So we're all sharing a hotel room. You know, that's that's a kill on trail. Let's all shove each other also into one hotel room so we stop at the cvs and they go you are not allowed the car so they lock me in the car <laughs> and they're walking and i just was so out of my mind i kept i started to honk the horn and so Catherine turns around like what and i go Wait a minute. <laughs> she was like G -g -g. and i go so they turn around again get a little further honk the horn again oh my god turn around, like now she gives me a look like a mother like i'm gonna kill you like sit down and I'm like, then I'm like, I've lost. It was like a crazy puppy I had been left in the car. Who's hitting the horn by mistake? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Why did you have to go to CVS? Uh, I don't know. They had to at CVS. What did we, I don't even know what we needed. Give me it's sleeping some, pills. Maybe. I don't know. They needed no. to knock me out. I, it was something like somebody needed Kleenex. hand lotion or, yeah, <laughs> it was, or like someone had needed cold medication. I forget what we were doing there. but And then I just remember I, we did go back to the hotel room and they literally like sat on me to go to sleep for a while. Oh, yeah. We tried to like pull the curtains closed and be like, it's nap time. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> like a, so a live I, wire of craziness. I don't remember your brother being there. I'm sorry. Well, the, the reason I remember is because he was there with David, oh. and we went to Chatham Bars Inn. What's and, Chatham uh, Bars Inn? It's a very, very, very nice resort at the end of Cape Cod. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we don't remember that. It has yeah. no. Are you we kidding? were included, Aunt Therese. <laughs> we were stuck in a Motel Six. Right. I didn't remember that. So did you stay a little longer? I mean, because I think most of us flew in for the funeral and then left. You might have stayed longer, right. Mom. Right, okay. we must have, yeah. We stayed a couple I, of days. I have no recall. I mean, Mom, Dad's funeral, both back east. Yeah, it may have been just one night. I, I don't know, but no, yeah. I didn't travel for it just one. Night. No, no, what I mean, staying at Chatham Bars Inn. Oh yeah, I don't know. Because the last time we saw Nana was at Nicole, your daughter's wedding. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we sort of picked her up and got her ready and brought her to the um, the wedding, wedding mass. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then you know because you guys kept Michelle, she's so out of it, she won't even know there's a reception. You got to take her back, take her back to her home, and you know. T uh, Nana knew she was missing a party. She was pissed. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. Which you guys, of course, I understand. You're all tied up with your wedding stuff. We're putting her back in the rental van with Helen Marie, our other cousin. And we're trying to just act like, no, you went to the wedding and that's it. Ta da da da. <laughs> and she's like, no, where's the party? Where's the cake? No, she's and I'm like, they sold some bill of bullshit she totally knows there's supposed to be a reception absolutely yeah and we were told flat out because the reception was at that beautiful marina right right we cannot bring her because she's gonna get too tired and right. it made sense and i didn't want to have to babysit no for sure yeah. but she knew so yeah. then we had to take her back and then she you know Helen Marie is so funny because she's like well what can we do to help her like you know Maybe we'll have a party here. I go, Helen, we have to get the reception. So then it was like, she, of course, wanted to sneak out one of her little cigarettes. And then she wanted, like, she wanted to have a party with us because we were all there. So we had to go outside with her. And she smoked her cigarette, but she can only do two puffs at that point. Yeah, and that yeah. was like, it It was just the, almost the, the memory right. or the uh, tradition of it. So we're sitting there and we're like, oh, my God, like. Where are we saying we're going? We're like in our dresses. Like, where are we acting like we're going? But she's like, why are you all leaving? Where's the cake? Did we have cake? I didn't. Were there speeches? You're like, 
I mean, do we say yes and make her feel like she has worse dementia than she does? Or do Aww. we just say no? We're like, well, no, Nana, it's actually nowhere close. And that that's what we kind of, it was like a, an abridged version of the truth. Yeah. For you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, she, and she's like, she oh. She ticked off. Oh, yeah. She, she, she did you hear about it later? Is that what you... It, well, when she said to me, like, aren't I going? Oh, no. Yes. And I said, no. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yeah, you know, this is not about you, Mom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then she really... Back I do, to the nursing home. See ya. I remember oh, she geez. really did want... Thank you, girls, for, for doing that. Well, I were the one thing she was... You know, this is Nana is Nana to the core. So we're basically wheeling her out stage left. And she, like, put on the brakes. Oh, my God, what? Because she wanted a picture with Nicole. Uh-huh. She did not get like mm. what she felt was like her moment. So now, I mean, Helen Marie and I, we were really involved with this. So we now are on the side and we know Nicole is leaving out the front of the church about to get in her car and leave. So we are racing so fast and Nana in this wheelchair like on the side of the church like <laughs> going over bumps and this and that through guard like get her to the front of the church because we're like she okay we're no, she's not going to the party but she's got to get a picture and I think there's a picture of Nicole in the front of the church just basically standing by Nana's wheelchair oh. that we like <laughs> I feel like throwing Wait, rice at her. You go. Like, no, I don't think that made it into the wedding album. Oh, I don't geez. think so. it wasn't really posed picture, but it happened. And I just because you know she was seeing her from a distance up on the altar, yeah, yeah. and so it was you know it was Nana needed her moment, so oh, we made sure God. she got it. Yeah. And then they're taking it off, and then she's looking at us again. When are we going to the party? It's like oh yeah yeah. I know, so yeah. yeah, but that's the last time I think I that is the last time I saw her. Yeah, and then you know. The crazy funeral where I was massively sleep deprived with all the and relatives. Completely bonkers. I'm just trying to imagine which ones of your grandkids will be shuffling you off from whatever wedding <sighs> you're not invited to the after party of. <laughs> the one that calls you gigsters or <laughs> yeah. Gigster. Gigster. Yeah. Yeah. High level like respect. Gangster is what it sounds like to me. Yeah. And so then when you knew your brother was ill and passing away, did you go Either one of you able to go back and visit or spend time with him? He was in Oregon at the time. Mm-hmm. And Therese had come out to visit me. And she was going to go home. And then she was going to come back at Thanksgiving. I think that's what you had Well, prior, after Thanksgiving. Maybe. Prior to that, Joseph and I and David went to a very nice resort, let's say, in Tucson, Arizona. Oh. oh. And he was going to drive down from Oregon. And I flew to Tucson and he was a little late arriving came into the airport and um, it wasn't the airport but anyway um, I met him and he's sitting down you know I said what's what's going on David said he's not doing very well he's not feeling well Mm. and so we went to the resort we had a wonderful dinner and chit chat and stuff and he said I'm gonna go to the doctor and get my Coumadin level checked what's that so he was on a blood thinner oh okay actually i think he did fly in okay Mm. i'm a little confused about that but anyway he went to the hospital and we were like three or four blocks from the university hospital there brutally hot it's like nine o'clock in the morning well like how do people live here it's so baking hot yeah and um so he went in get his coumadin level checked and found out he had pancreatic cancer while you were on this trip at that time, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh, it's like we had a wonderful dinner, and then the next thing you know, he's got pancreatic cancer. So he wasn't allowed to fly back home because of the danger of um, blood clots. Oh. Oh, wow. And they wanted to keep him there. You know, like his life was in such danger, they didn't figure he'd make it home. Oh, wow. <gasps> yeah. Oh, and then to be so far away from your own home. and So he, he, wa- he I'm going home, is what he said. So then he went back to Oregon. Did they drive, you mean? So he yeah. and David drove somehow? Yeah. Yeah. Like rented a car or whatever? Yeah. Wow. And you were going to go home, and I remember you and I talking, and I said, I think you need to go up and say goodbye to him. I came out for another reason. A little bit later. Yes. And you weren't going up to see him. Well, how well, quick Well, I got a, a phone call yeah. that he had fallen and that he oh. was in the hospital. Mm. And it just sounded so catastrophic to me that I said, I'm going to go up as long as I'm on the East Coast Mm -hmm. or West Coast. I'm going to go up and see him. And then, you know, he didn't last 24 hours. Wow. After that. Yeah. Well, wait, I, from I you were there two days or so. And I was due on Tuesday. Yeah. And, and I came up 
my flight was in the afternoon. He was already dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it wait. Was... So just for the timeline from this trip where he gets diagnosed, essentially, yes. how quick of four or five months? Oh, wow. That quick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah was... Wow. And at this point, dad's already passed away. And, you know, had your second husband already passed away as well? Yes. Because yeah. you're both widows, and I, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Joseph and you and I had a trip to Oregon. Right. We went up to and Deep he Bay was fine. In yeah, and you know, I, I remember he was doing the research. I was working, so were you, and he was doing the research about where we were going to go. The yeah. three of us, yeah, and and he came up with something, and he was telling me about it. And I said I had more in mind, you know, being on the coast and so forth. So he found this place. And it was on the shores of the smallest deep harbor deep in Bay. Yeah. the world, yeah. I think. Yeah. What? Not Maybe not the world, but in the United States, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was. And looking out, it was like a, a, a B&B. No, it was like an um, Airbnb type of okay. thing. We actually rented a house. And you could look out doing the dishes and see whales feeding in the, the uh, seaweed. Wow. Yeah, it was fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. We'll have to do this when you come back and visit because I would like to go into your travels and even your other brothers because, you know, what's crazy? We're a big family and knock on wood, there's eight of us and seven of us are still here on earth. And so we can kind of tell each other's stories. But right now, you're the only two that can tell right. the story of your siblings and your whole family, and really. Your parents. Mm-hmm. So for us, and I always say this to our listeners, like talking to your family and getting the history, even if you put down your cell phone and hit the record button is so important for the next generation to know the stories because you definitely revealed things today about your brother Joseph I was not aware of and because he was such a in a way a figure in our lives was a bit peripheral because he would dip in and out I didn't feel like I ever knew him and there would be occasional updates and I'm sure because of our age appropriateness wise you would only share certain things with us at certain times and even later in life we really haven't had big conversations about your brothers and it's you know like i said it's a way for us to learn about our family history and even more about you and you aunt therese because you know your life experiences tell our own history Mm -hmm. and we can learn from them but you know joseph was one of those people as an adult i go gosh it would have been so awesome to know him better because he just sounds like such a fascinating person but because the time he was living he probably not until later life started to live a full existence and then to think it was cut short at 60 years old yeah what a shame and he he was very funny too yes i got to get a little bit of that when we talked later in life because like you talked about broadway and bet midler and he had a drive sense of humor and he really enjoyed gossip (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's... He did? Oh, that's funny. And it, But it was like highfalutin fun gossip. It wasn't yeah. ever malicious. Sure. Sure, it sure, wasn't sure. Yeah. trying to be mean to people who would be like, you know, did you know this? And he would name some old actress. I'd be like, I don't right, know who right. the hell you're talking about, but, you know, some old Hollywood <laughs> lore. Yeah. So it was things like that that well, he... He knew a lot of stuff like yes. that. Yeah. He, in some ways, reminded me a little bit about your dad. And like you, Liz, reminded me, mm. yes. but a much quieter and subtle and, you know. And I think that's why we were at, gosh, I hope it wasn't Nana's funeral because I was out of my gourd, but it was something we were together and I sat next to him and I, I did sort of my snide comments about sure, certain sure. things or, and he gave me a look and he was like, oh, yeah, oh, and that's, that's what started mm-hmm. it. He would have loved that. Yeah. yeah. And that's why just, but it only was really the last two years of his life that we kind of started to connect a bit and i was excited about it but he still lived far, like he was living in portland so it still felt disconnected sure. but you know I, I think it's so important for us to learn more about him because it's not like he had children so right that saying you know you're only carried on by people talking about you remembering you and yeah. sharing the love or experience they had with you so it's so yeah. important to you know for all of our kids to know about him as well I have a funny little side note thing about Joseph. I do remember that he used to make a big deal out of your birthday, Mom. Didn't he used to come and, like, bring you champagne? And, like, it was so cute (laughs) and sweet. Every birthday, he took me out to dinner. Oh, that's adorable. And I was expecting probably John. I can't really remember which baby it was. (laughs) Sorry to say. (laughs) And he called me up and he said, well, where do you want to go for your birthday this year? And I said, Santa Barbara. 
oh, mm-hmm. get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you could just hear why you know, could, he didn't quite say what, but you could hear that tone in his voice, and he said, "Really?" And I said, "Yeah, it would be so nice to have a nice long drive and talk with you and blah blah oh, blah." Yeah. And he said, "Well, there's a place I always wanted to go up there. It'd be a good excuse." Hmm. So we did, and it was in Montecito. There was El Encanto. Yeah. Uh, You know why? (laughs) This is why I love him. That is one of the first, like, hotels that Hollywood royalty would go to escape and hide and have their illicit love affairs in the bungalows there. So it's a restaurant way up on a hill that looks down onto Santa Barbara. So it's very private. The Ellen Canto Inn. I mean, that he... Five star, too. Oh, Amazing. That does yeah. not even surprise me at all. Yeah. So we get up there, and I remember they gave us a banquette seat, you oh. know, which was very lovely. Except my feet didn't reach the ground. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Because I'm shorter standing up than I am sitting down. So that means the legs are shorter. <laughs> and so. Yeah, we all had to put that together uh, for a second. Well, all of a sudden, there's this wonderful, dense pillow under my feet. Oh. The Mater Dei had just come up and put it there without making oh. any kind of fuss or, you know. Oh, that's some service right there. Oh, you know. And I remember that was the very first time I had endive and pecan, you know. Oh, oh a salad. That salad. Oh, that's a great that was salad. Just, <laughs> it was just out of this world. We had a wonderful time. So it took us two hours to drive up and two hours to drive back. And we had, you know, we would get into conversations on the phone. And when we went out to dinner, that just were endless. <laughs> Oh. We'd be sitting outside in the car for about half, another half hour. Oh, lovely. He was. Well, I'll tell you a cute little story. So I was probably 18, and uh, my brother gave me my first martini. Oh. Yeah. I wasn't legal. <laughs> <laughs> that's what big then, brothers are for. Yeah. Yeah. That's what then, they're supposed to do. Another time, he took me to see Fantasia after having two brownies <laughs> oh, that were laced. Wait, special brownies? Yes. So what? I, I, wow. I, I, I'm watching Fantasia, you know, and it's not hitting me. All of a sudden, it hits me, and I go like, <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> as the colors come toward me and stuff and he had he had a friend with him that i think he wanted me to meet you know oh, like it was a, a little bit of a setup oh a little bit gosh, of a setup maybe not maybe and yeah I, i'm so friggin hot <laughs> <laughs> and i and i tell joseph i said I, i'm i'm like uh, i'm over the limit right so he says it's okay it's okay and so we finish fantasia and we go outside and i'm barfing in the parking lot. Oh my gosh. As he's like holding my back and you know it's okay are you okay and I don't even know what happened to the friend. <laughs> he <laughs> ran for it. He was like I'm not up for this. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh okay. I thought God. you said I was going to get a brownie. <laughs> no. Oh. I knew. Maybe you ate his brownie ate, also. Uh oh. Uh, being a chocolate lover I ate. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a mistake. <laughs> if we learned anything you know edibles uh, all in well, small look, doses. Th- yeah it hits you later. It oh. You know. In the middle of Fantasia immediate. that is almost a borderline nightmare. Yeah. I was, mean depending on where I mean, the dancing hippos. Yeah, yeah. This, oh, I can just remember the... my head going like, Ugh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> there were there were people that, that actually <laughs> thought that probably whoever really oh, yeah. designed this was on, on acid. acid. Yeah. I was just going to say, that's how it's supposed to be seen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's course. how you get the extra oh, layer. Oh, yeah. did, you, oh did you get the two brownie version? <laughs> oh, man, that'll send you right into a trash can. Watch out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> See, I would not have predicted this yeah. of Uncle Joseph. Yeah. No. And he, I think we saw it in the the cinema, the in the round type of thing. Remember oh, that yeah. building, the Cinerama Dome? Y- yes, mm-hmm. yes. Oh wow, yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. That would make you sick just by itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, one last little thing from Joseph that has endured in my little family, and how he comes up weirdly on the regular. He once, I think, for Christmas, sent a box of chocolates that were lemon with a dark chocolate cover. Oh, yes. I don't know where he got uh, them. You know, he sure. had very good taste. Harry and David or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, something like that. But he sent a box to the house. I don't think he came. Or maybe he came and brought them. But I distinctly remember this box of chocolates with this lemon center. And we're big fans of Seas Candy because mm-hmm. that's, you know, a local candy company that we all love. The best in the world. hmm And they make a lemon truffle that is so reminiscent of that candy. And it's my personal favorite Etsy's candy. So, like, when you go there and you just get, like, one or two pieces, I will always, always, always 
get a lemon truffle. And I always think, and I've told my daughter, Sarah, that this is absolutely because of Uncle Joseph. And every time I have a lemon truffle, I think of him. Because oh. oh. I just am like, oh, yeah, that was one of his sophisticated yes, tastes. absolutely. Yes. One of his like special mm. little gifts. And I feel like it was related to a holiday and not one of your birthdays. But those are the two things. Him yeah. taking care of you so sweetly on your birthday and always making a big deal out of it. And then lemon truffles. Yeah. For some reason, <laughs> you, you know, I really, thought, yeah. What the heck? I mean, you, you coming to visit us, all these children in the house. He's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. He, yeah. Was, he was the real, you know, uncle of wonderful gifts with James and Aww, William. Oh, lovely. He used to buy them matching little outfits. They oh, were so oh. adorable. They were just... Then you had too many kids. He's like, Mary, well, I can't keep it. up with yeah. this. There's like, no what? And then you have five kids. He's like, I. Yeah. there's no I mean, what way. What are all their sizes and buying matching outfits? Really? I mean, it could have been like the Von Trapp family, <laughs> like with all of us at different sizes and various <laughs> oh. m- mostly matching outfits. That would have been <laughs> amazing. Crazy. But yeah, eight oh. kids is a lot. Yeah. Well, all right. You were very young, but do you have any memories of Uncle Not really. Joseph? No? I mean, I do remember when he came out for that visit and David was there. But uh, other than that, or like him visiting when I was younger, not really. Mm. Yeah. See, yeah. that's why it's so important to do these yeah. type of podcasts. Because yeah. now, I mean, I will take away the two brownie pot Fantasia story. Oh, that's amazing. Like, that is... Thank you for sharing that. That's one of the best laughs I've had. In I know. A while. I hope my kids don't listen. They are. We're gonna make sure. We're gonna make sure. We're gonna yeah, cut the story they will be out and send it to them. To a screening of Fantasia <laughs> weekly, I promise. No, they'll be mortified. <laughs> <laughs> mom, mom, do you want some brownies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Well, we will definitely next time you are in town, we'll have to get back together because there are many stories, other siblings, but even hearing more about your history and right. trays, we'd love to hear. So we kind of got sidetracked, but very. Important importantly so, on Uncle Joseph. And it was lovely to hear his stories. And we're so happy you come to visit. It's so great to always see you. you. So for sure, next time you're in town, um, carve out more time to come to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love it. And we appreciate you all listening to Family Dynamics. And please follow us on all of our social media. That's at Family Dynamics with a K. (laughs) Thank you once again for listening to Family Family Dynamics. Dynamics.